Hi, my name is Matt Yost, an Agroclimate Extension Specialist with Utah State University. Today we wanted to talk about uh, steps to take when, when using a no-till drill. The purpose for this is to, uh, to help people that might be interested in, in using a no-till drill or that might be renting a, a no-till drill from a conservation district. Uh, many of the conservation districts in Utah have such, uh, such drills available for rent. And so we wanted to, to kind of go through some steps to take if, uh, if you're using one of, these, one of these drills. So to do that, we, we've invited Tony Richards with the uh, Utah Department of, of Agriculture and Food. To, uh, he, Tony works with several conservation districts here in Northern Utah. And uh, wanted Tony to kind of show us what the steps you would take if, if you were using this no-till drill on, on your farm. Okay, my name's Tony Richards. I work with the conservation districts up here in Northern Utah. Uh, what we got here is a Great Plains no-till drill. It's a 1206 NT, it's a 12 foot no-till drill. Kind of wanted to go through a few things, explain what some of the differences might be between this and a conventional drill and how to get started. Uh, one of your main things that you notice with a no-till drill, it is a much heavier piece of equipment than what a conventional would be of the same width. A lot more steel here you got to worry about. Um, so you want to make sure that you have a minimum horsepower tractor. For this model, about 75 horsepower. Otherwise, you're going to have a fun time trying to pull it through any field, especially if you have any kind of hills or anything. Another thing that's not common on a conventional drill down here is we notice you have these coulters. This is what's going to help you get through the residue, help you get through some tough conditions, be able to open up the soil a little bit better. Because with no-till, you're not, you're not having any soil preparation with tillage. It's not going to be loose. So you've got to make sure that you have capability of opening that soil. So these are kind of a key to help with that, along with the weight. Yeah, one of the big things to remember when you set up any drill you want to start with, make sure that you're level. Because if you're too tip too far back or tip too far forward where you are hooked up on your tractor, you're not going to be able to either get the openers into the ground or your your uh, <clears throat> your blocks in the back that keep your gauge your depth are going to be too far down and you're not going to get the depth you want, or your cultures are going to go too far deep and then you're going to look like you're putting in potatoes instead of drilling in wheat. So. Uh, first thing first, get your, tra get your tractor hooked up, you know, get your drill set and ready to go. So when you get your no-till drill back to your farm, first thing you want to do is make sure that you hook it up properly to your tractor. A couple things we're looking at, you got your hydraulic connections that you want to make sure that are hooked up. Also make sure that you have a right size category of pin for the equipment that you're using that it is long enough to go through the hammer strap as well as your regular you know hitch on your tractor on your pull bar your draw bar and that it is lockable at the bottom with a pin so that doesn't pop out while you're going down the field last thing you want to do is have that separate from your tractor while you're going along you also have a power connection but in most cases this is better for just going down the road it runs the lights and things on most of your drills this one doesn't have any other components that requires electricity. So keeping that locked up and out of place so it doesn't drag anywhere is a good, good thing. Make sure your jack stand on your other side is, is either taken off and set off somewhere or tipped up so it doesn't drag along the ground. Otherwise, you're going to be buying a new jack for somebody. Once, once you've got the drill here hooked up to your tractor, everything's, everything's good. The next thing we want to do is remove the lock. So you have a hydraulic lock here. This keeps that drill from coming down, from the hydraulics going down while you're going down the road so you don't start drilling, drilling the highways. You know, the state wouldn't be very happy if we did that. So you want to remove that pin off of that lock. Make sure that nothing's in the way. I mean, obviously you don't want anybody under the drill. On this model, it has a nice little home for it up here put it out of the way so it doesn't get lost now there is a lock on this model on both sides so you want to make sure you remove both of them before you try and set it down and then you want to jump in your tractor 
and lower the drill down and get ready to set your depth. So when you want to set your depth on this particular model, your press wheel here in the back is what serves as your, also as your depth gauge. This little arm comes up and there's a stop inside there that's set with this, this handle. If we notice each one of these spacings in here is an eighth, is a, a quarter of an inch in depth. So every time you move that a notch, it's going to allow it to go either deeper or shallower depending on where you have it at. You want to make sure that you would do it for every single one of them and set them at the same depth. Here we have our openers. One thing you want to make sure is that all of these are spinning freely. None of them are really bound up. You know that they haven't got possibly a bearing issue or anything going on. They want to freely move as well. Just check everything down here. Same thing with the coulters. Make sure that they can move freely as well. If there's any grease certs or anything down here, you want to make sure you grease everything before you get started as well. On this model too, you have a couple other, you have multiple tubes. So this particular drill has three different boxes. So you can do your regular small grains. This is for a native seed. It's nice and big so that native seed doesn't get bridged inside the tube. And then lastly, it has a small seed box on the back for things like alfalfa. And if you notice, the, this is the seed tube for the native seed. It gets dropped out behind the opener. We can't see the seed tube for the, 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 uh, the grains as well. It sits actually behind this opening plate, uh, behind the opening disc. And then the small seed dribbles out here out of this tube uh, behind on top of the surface. So it's not actually as deep as it would be on the others. You want to make sure those things aren't plugged up. They're nice and clean and clear. Also, there's nothing stuck in the bottom of them. So when you go to seed, it doesn't get blocked. So the next thing you want to check, since this is a run of drill, you want to make sure that you check your seed boxes, that they're empty, that your uh, previous uh, user hadn't left you a surprise inside there. Um, if there is something in there, you want to make sure you clean it out because you don't want to seed what they seeded, hopefully. You know. So make sure everything's all cleaned out. Usually shop vac is a great tool to have. At that time, suck out every little spot. So this is a good example of why you always want to make sure that you do a, a neighborly service and clean it out. We've got some seeds still left in here from the previous use. And it's good to, like I said, get in there and kind of vacuum that out so that someone else isn't getting what you planted into what they're planting next. Um, you can open up the seed meters. We'll show you up front here in a minute how you can get the seed gates opened up and get that last little bit of seed out of that meter as well. Um, so on the native seed box, the other thing you wanna re always remember is we do not fill this box all the way up. You keep it about halfway full because if you overfill it and go above the agitators, it's too much work on it, it will actually stop them and they won't go and then the seed won't flow out. The other thing you always want to add to a native seed is you want to add graphite to help keep that seed flowing. Otherwise it will bridge and it will cause a problem. Even though you think the agitators would keep moving things, you've got to have graphite and make sure that you don't fill the box even up half. No more than, no more than about right, right here on those agitators. So the next step that you want to do is set your rate. So you want to get into the, you can get into the manual that comes with the drill, look up the crop that you're wanting to plant and kind of find the rate that you want to plant that at, how many pounds per acre. On this particular drill, you have two, two settings on it. One, you have a gearbox that has a one to four range on it. So you want to make sure that you have the corresponding chart for that range. Yep, that box. Thing. Yeah. So after setting your gear setting, then you have your way of adjusting your rate here. So you have a little lock washer nut that you want to undo. allows you to be able to slide this to the corresponding number that you'll find on your chart. Now, it's only going to get you close. It's not going to be perfect. So if you really want to make sure that you're planting what you want, then you're going to want to do a calibration. 
The other thing you want to make sure is that on your meter box here, you can see this little arm that has a gate and it will depend on what seed you're planting. So if you're planting wheat, you want to make sure that that gate is up on this first notch where it's set right now. If you're planting bigger seeds, something around the size of a soybean, you want it to go down to the second notch. And if you're planting really big seeds, some things that might come in your cover crops, up to things like pumpkin seeds and weird things like that, you would want to go down to the third notch so that it's able to go through the meter and then pass down into the tube. Okay, so after you set your rate, you can take this handle here, put it on the, on the drive shaft here, give it a few cranks to kind of prime your seed into your meters. And then you want to make sure that you engage the drive on the wheel so that the meters will be turning as the wheels go. So on this particular model, there is two drives on it. So on this side, this engages the drive for the small seed box and the grain box. On the other side is the same setup, but it does the native seed box. So you want to make sure, depending on which box you're running, which drive you engage.